In this video I'm going to show you how to make a very cheap and simple vacuum chamber. It's really easy to make. It'll take like an hour to make probably. Maybe two hours. What you'll need is a air compressor. I got this 250 PSI one from the thrift store for three dollars. Take it apart and inside you should find this simple electric motor and a gear and a piston. Just a simple air pump assembly. And so you can turn that gear and the piston will go up and down and you might hear a valve in there making some noise. Try to keep all the wires and the switch connected if possible when you're taking it apart because you'll want that later. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is figure out where the valves are and what kind of valves you've got in there. On mine, fortunately, the inlet and outlet valve are both on the head. Sorry, that's out of the frame, but I'll put it back and put it in. You can see there's a hole where it goes out and there's a reed valve on the other side. That's the high pressure out. And then there's this hole with a reed valve on the inside is the vacuum in, which is what we want. We're just going to have to switch it around so we're using the other valve. Because it's designed to obviously put pressure out. And you can see the other part, just a piston in a tube. Tight fitting, good seal and everything. I took that pressure gauge off because it's not going to be helping from here out. It's just in the way. You can use it for something else. So I already showed you these valves, but I'll just show you how that reed valve works. If you're not familiar, it just is a little flapper thing. It closes over the hole. If there's more pressure on the other side, it will open. This, the hose going out at this point, is just an exhaust tube. So try to get it off. I was going to see if this unscrews, but it doesn't. It's doing nothing. So I had to cut it off, which is fine. And I'm also going to cut off the bicycle th pump thing at the other end, but we want to save this tube because it's a nice, thick, stiff tube. You can use it as our vacuum tube. I'm thinking about this for a second, but I'm just going to go for it, snip it up. No use for it, for this project anyway. So once you've got figured out what you're going to do, which hopefully if your pump is just like mine then you can do exactly what I'm going to do, otherwise you might have to figure out something slightly different, but once you've got it figured out just reassemble. So to get the vacuum, to get like a hose coming up of the vacuum in, what I did was make a little plastic piece out of a piece of flattened out PVC that fits nicely over there and drilled a hole in it to accept this copper pipe that I had. Just a little scrap of copper pipe. And I drilled the hole a hair too small so that the pipe doesn't really fit in, but it almost does. And then I'm going to heat up the pipe with this little torch and force it into the plastic and that should give it a nice fit. See, that's in there. Fits very closely. And this is the hose that we cut off of there. The reason I chose this copper pipe, I'm blowing out it because it's hot, but the reason I chose that tube was because, mainly because I just had it laying around, but also because it fits this rubber tube nicely. Very tight, close fit against that rubber tube. So that fit won't need any glue or anything against that rubber tube. 
as I said, that just is going to sit right on there. So just get out some epoxy and mix it up and use that to glue on your plastic adapter. Obviously you can cut that little adapter piece out of whatever material, but plastic was convenient for me to use. Make sure you get epoxy around the entire edge and you make a nice seal with it, but you don't want so much that it will drip down and screw up the valve. And I also put all the extra epoxy right around the base of that copper tube to make sure that was sealed, because that probably would have allowed a tiny bit of air through. So once the epoxy hardens, you can force the rubber pipe onto there, rubber tube. And turn it on. You can see that, put your thumb over it and see that it is working as a vacuum pump. So for the vacuum chamber itself, I'm just at least for this video, obviously you can connect it up to whatever sealed container you can connect it to, but for this video I'm just going to use a jam jar. This is a bolt with a hole drilled through it and a tube forced through the hole. This is kind of a pain to make a part like that, but I had it from a project from a long time ago, so I'm just using this. I'd recommend you just get some plumbing part or something that will allow you to connect up to the hose that you're using from the pump. I'm just getting a piece of tape right now to use as a gasket, which isn't going to be enough, but it's okay for a first test. So put the a nut onto there and tighten it down really well. What I ended up doing was putting hot glue around like both sides before tightening it down and then squishing it down onto there and that made a pretty good seal at the end, but for right now it's just tape. You could probably also use silicone or whatever type of sealer you would want to use there. You can blow into the jar and see if it seems like it has a good seal, which to me it does right there but it's not perfect. Then connect your hose. And that's basically it. That's the entire thing put together. One easy way to test it is to blow up a balloon just slightly and tie it. Put it in your vacuum chamber and when you flick it on it should inflate a lot. because the pressure inside the balloon will be a lot higher than the pressure outside. You can see that in this first test, there's pretty bad leaks. But the balloon is not inflating that much. But here, I've put in all the hot glue around the seams and everything. Any leaks that are there now should be leaks that are inside the actual valves in the the vacuum pump that we've converted from the air compressor. Nothing that we can really do about those except that we could snip the pipe, the rubber pipe, and put in a valve. If you can find a valve, I don't know where you would get one, but you might have to custom make a one-way valve that's really good that would go from the jar to the pump and it wouldn't allow air to go the other way, then you could get a higher vacuum and you wouldn't have to leave the pump on to keep the vacuum. But with the jar sealed up, it does get a lot better results. There's still some improvements to make with minor leaks in the pump itself. You can see the balloon deflating as air comes back in. But if you got a good one-way valve in the line, a better one than what's in the pump, then that should go away.
mostly. Probably wouldn't completely go away. Just show you the final result again. The balloon can inflate to almost completely fill the jar with this setup. So I'd call that pretty good for how crudely this was made. And with that valve, like I said, putting in another valve that's better, it probably would be a lot better. So later all I have to do is finish this, probably make a bigger actual chamber to connect it to, and that valve in the hose, then it will be a good vacuum chamber.